Okay, okay, as we start this video, wow, that one's a little bit up there. As we start this video, it's going to be a short video about density and what exactly density is. Not really going to work any example problems, but it's going to occur quite a bit in Chapter 9, this use of the term density. So as we look at density, let's kind of look at these samples of uh, different materials I've got in front of me. I've got a piece of aluminum here, a piece of brass, and then this large piece of plastic that we see in front of us. Now, when we first look at these, it's like, wow, this thing right here is massive. And then, then this little piece of brass, it's definitely the smallest of all of them. Well, let's just bring us up to this. Let's take a look. Here is a balance. It just so happens to be sitting in front of me. And let's do this. Here is, on the left side of the balance, that little piece of brass. And then here's that piece of aluminum we'll set on the other side. And then what we notice is when they finally quit shaking is, hey, they have the exact same mass as each other, but the piece of brass is smaller. Well, let's, let's try this. What about this big old honking piece of plastic? We can set that big honking piece. Surely this weighs more. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and my cord is on it. But let's see. Oh, my goodness. The brass and that huge piece of plastic have identical masses to each other. So now let's kind of go back and relook at these notes then based upon that. And I'm going to fiddle with the camera for a little bit. So every, all three of these objects had the exact same mass. Now it is clear that they are not of the same size. Obviously this plastic object has the largest volume of all of them and followed by this, and the piece of brass has the smallest volume. But they all have the same mass. And that's because the difference in this comes through density. This object, I mean, it's really kind of cool when you think about it. This piece of brass and this piece of plastic have the same mass. But if you notice, the piece of brass is packed into a much smaller size. That's because its density is greater. It's packed together inside here. So the particles in this piece of brass are compressed into a smaller shape, into a smaller volume. And that's why it's got more mass per unit volume than this piece of plastic. As a matter of fact, we can probably throw that piece of plastic in water. It would probably float around. But anyway, that's where we'll be looking at in this chapter. And same thing here for this aluminum. It's had the same mass. So here you can easily compare brass and aluminum. Density-wise, you can get a little bit of idea. It kind of looks like from this that brass is probably about mm, three times the density of aluminum. But anyway, we'll move on with this video. The equation for density. Density is nothing but. Now, to make this show up more, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a very, I'm going to make a row with a nice big tail on there so that you don't, I'm going to be using P in unit 9, and I don't want you to be getting my rows and my P's mixed up. So density is equal to mass per unit volume, and there's my unit thereof. Now, for the most part, this is physics. So in physics, we're going to pretty much be using units of kilograms and meters cubed. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the only other thing you might use with this, you might end up doing plain old volume equals length, length times width times height. Um, if you've got volume of a cylinder, a, a cylinder is power square L. I'm sitting here trying to think. Oh, a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So there's a few different. So there's your rectangular solid. This would be your cylinder, and by cylinder I'm implying that object. So pi r squared, the area times the length. And then if you've got a round ball or something like that, there's our volume for that equation. Now, sometimes in these problems, you're going to see the word specific gravity. And by gravity, this has got nothing to do with 9.8. That's where some people, oh, so gravity has changed. No, if you're on Earth, gravity is still 9.8. So specific gravity, though, is really, it's just this. I'm just going to write a very simple definition. Something's density compared to water. There, a very, very 
simple definition on that. And so you might read something and it says specific gravity is 1.20. Well, if something specific gravity is 1.20, it means its density is 1.2 times of what water is. Because water, H2O, has a density of 1 gram per centimeter cube or 1,000 if you're in kilograms. By the way, most of the meters cube. Most of the time in here, we'll be using 1,000 for the density of water in this class. But anyway, sometimes you'll just say specific gravity. And for water, it is 1. And that's it. Specific gravity of water is 1. So it kind of goes along with its density being 1 and 1,000. So if you see something, for example, if you're reading a problem, and in that problem it says that something has a specific gravity of 1.04 for specific gravity, then that just means that material's density is equal to 1040 kilograms per meter cubed. Other than that, I mean, if you're to Unit 9 in physics, you should know how to solve an equation like rho equals mass over volume. So at any given moment, you might be given rho and v and asked to find m or something of that nature. So anyway, I'm not going to do any problems, but just making sure you were still familiar with this concept of density. And I'll see you in the next video for a